<sighs> Exciting news. Uh, I just got off the phone with the guy from our local camera store, Henry's, uh, that the camera that we've been waiting for for a couple months now, well, it's been about a month since it came out, but we pre-ordered a couple months ago, because it's a hard to get item, uh, especially in our area. There was a really long list, and they've been filling them as they go, and finally our ticket came up. So they gave us a call and said, your camera's in the store, come get it. So I just got back from the gym, just had a shower, and now we're gonna go get the camera. Let's get undone. Get undone. He's crazy. All right, so this is the A7 III from Sony. Let's see what's in the box. So you got your paperwork, strap, the camera body itself, the battery, and then the charger. Now this camera doesn't come with a, a battery pack charger. This one instead is more like a like a phone. You this is a USB cable, and you plug that into here, just like you would with your iPhone or whatever. And then the USB cable plugs into the camera over here, and you can run it on uh, power this way. You can charge it this way, and then also on this end instead, you could plug in plug it into one of those USB power pack things and use that as like an extra power situation for your camera. Now some people have complained that they didn't come with the type of charger that you could charge your batteries separate on. I don't know how big of a deal it's gonna be for our usage. I mean, we'll see if it turns out we really need one, then you could pick one up, but they do cost a little bit extra. But the value of the camera is still outstanding regardless of that, and I'll get into that in a moment. Okay, so full disclaimer, uh, we did have the A7R3 before getting this camera, but we took it back because when this camera was announced, we're like, wait a minute, that seems like a much better value buy. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today mostly, is just the value situation here. Now I would say that the A7R3 is a more complete package. You know, unboxing this, there's, there's not that much to it. And like I said, there is no charger. You use the, uh, the USB cable here. And I'm also noticing that this is just a USB, it's like a micro type B cable connector. And when you pop open the port here on the, on the camera, there's both, there's a type C and then also the type B. Now I'm guessing the type B isn't good for much other than I guess like slow data transfer and some charging. Uh, but the A7R3 came with the Type-C cable. There's no Type-C cable here. You can buy it yourself. I think Sony claimed that they should work about the same for charging your battery. So that might not be that important if you're just using the cable for a charger. But uh, yeah, you get a charger, you get a you know a cable for the charger, you get a Type-C cable, you get all that stuff with the A7R3. But the A7R3 is significantly more. Uh, in Canada here, the, this camera goes for about $2,600 Canadian, so that's like $1,999. And the A7R3 goes for $4,000 Canadian, or like $3,200 US. So with tax, you're paying about $1,500 more for what? A battery charger? I mean, yeah, there's more to the A7R3. It has a bigger sensor, it's like 42 megapixels, this one's only 24. But there's trade-offs that you get with that as well. That's why this is the, the balanced model. When you have uh, fewer megapixels, you can often get more room for better low light sensitivity and some other uh, video configurations that work a little bit better for the processing of the image into say a 4K, depending on how you crop or scale. What makes this camera so awesome is that it's a full frame camera that can do 4K video with no cropping while having exceptional low light. And you wouldn't be able to do that with the A7R3's specs. So it's not that big of a deal to me that, you know, that it doesn't come with an external charger because you can buy one of those and you can buy extra batteries. And yeah, they're a little bit pricey. You know, the chargers and the batteries are like $110, $120 respectively, I think Canadian. So it's like 80 and $90 US for a battery and for a charger. And that's a bit of money, 
but it's still nowhere near the $1,500 that you're gonna save. So let's go through a few of the specs here. Uh, like I said, I'm already pretty familiar with the body because it's exactly the same as the A7R 3 same battery. I believe all the ports and all the buttons and every part of the layout is exactly the same. It's just the internals that essentially changed. But I've got the specs up here so I don't make any mistakes, but I just kind of want to talk about value. So for US it's 2,000, for Canadian it's $2,600, keep that in mind. So for $2,600 camera, Canadian, you get a 24.2 megapixel sensor, which has great ratings on DxO Mark and stuff like that. So that's gonna be 6,000 by 4,000 pixels, the image. It has a native ISO of 100 to 51,200. So that's, by just a few years ago, that would be considered like an insane low light camera. And that's just sort of the standard native one on this. It's, ex it's expandable up to 204,000 ISO. It uh, takes the autofocus system almost in its entirety from the A9, which is Sony's, you know, top level sport shooter. Uh, almost cannibalizing the A9 thing completely and making it almost irrelevant. So you've got your 425 point contrast detection system and then an additional 693 point phase detect autofocus system. So you've got, you know, maybe the best autofocus system in the business. It, it kind of, you fight it out with Canon a little bit, but Sony's got the IAF, the eye autofocus, so that when you press that button, it finds the eye of the subject and just focuses so quickly. So they've got Canon kind of edged out in that regard. Other important specs, it's got a 10 frame per second maximum continuous shooting speed. So yeah, it's not as fast as the A9, but in so many ways, unless you need that specific, uh, you know, dual part of the A9 or the drive speed, you know, this is for half, the, for less than half the price of the A9, you're laughing. Now, when it comes to the resolution of the displays and the screens, the A7R 3 is better. It has a higher resolution display. The, A the A7R is all about resolution, so it makes sense the display is better. Now, I haven't used this one extensively yet, but uh, from what I've seen in the demos and stuff like that, the, um, the display, it, you're not really being handicapped that much by having a slightly lower resolution display, but it is worth pointing out that the A7R 3 does have a, have a nicer screen than this one, but the screen on this is fine. It's better than and the cameras from a couple years ago, so, so it's fine. Now, the video is where this one shines as well. That's why this is gonna be Julie's new main shooter, because Julie's been trying to get a little bit more into video now, but she's also a photographer, so this is a great, photographic camera, you know, maybe not as good as the a7R 3 but the video options are outstanding as well. So uh, what it's doing is it's going to take the full image of the sensor, which is more like a 6K image, and it's going to push that down into a 4K, so you're really kind of like super sampling your 6K down to 4K, and you're getting a full readout from the uh, from the from the frame, so you're getting a full frame. You're not going to get any cropping. Whatever millimeter lens you have on, that's what you're going to see through. And that's something I don't get the advantage of with my GH5 currently. And I love my GH5, and I think from a video perspective, I might I might do another video on this with the GH5 versus the A7 III. I think the GH5 is still going to be a better, you know, for video type camera, but it's gonna to be tough to compare a full frame camera in terms of the flexibility, the, the light options, the low light situation, you know, and some of the different lens widths and that kind of thing compared to uh, when you're working with a, a camera of the GH5, which has a two times crop in 4K. Now, I still think the feature set is better on the GH5, but the just sort of like, this is my full frame camera and it just does it all. I think the, Ace, and, and for the price too, because this is, comes in around the same price as the GH5, uh, I think for, for your, your you know, renaissance shooter, somebody wants to, great photos, great video, be able to do it all, flick some switches, lightweight, know your camera, all that stuff, this, this thing's a beast for that. And now that they put the new battery in it, and uh, Sony made a new battery in the last couple models that's way better like than, than their previous ones, because one of the biggest issues with Sony was that the batteries didn't last very long. So now you're getting much closer to what you would expect from like a DSLR type battery. Still not quite there, but quite a bit better. The better menu system, Sony's menu was kind of, you know, but now they got the good menu system. I mean, this is a, this is a no brainer in that budget, really. It's not very often that I say, the, the, there is no perfect camera, I say all the time, there's no perfect camera, but Pretty close, like I would say it's pretty close. This is like, if, if you just like, what's the cam, this, these are, because whenever you read these forms, it's always this, I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that. And this is the camera, just get that. If you got the money, if, if, if this is in your budget, and if you're looking for a pro camera, this is definitely in your budget. It's probably one of the least expensive ones that are out there because most of the rest of them are in around the 4,000 and above. So for Canadian or 2,600 for US 2,000, you, you, can't, you can't do better for the budget. It's, it's not out there. Uh, for what you get out of this camera. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it. I basically just wanted to make this video to express my excitement, but I didn't I didn't want to make one of those videos about, you know, before a product really comes out and you're like, oh, I've heard about this product. I've got it in my hand. I know the specs. 
it's 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 factual now the product's been out for a few weeks but uh we finally got ours it, it exists it is what it is and uh it is the best value camera available today and probably that i've seen I don't know, I think back to some cameras that I thought were great for their budget, you know, 5D Mark III from Canon and so on. And I think, I don't know that there's ever been a better valued camera released to date. I think this this might be it. And uh, I, I'm not, this, there's no fanboyism here or whatever, like I don't, I don't, you know, I shoot on a Panasonic, I got a Canon back there, we use some Sony stuff. I just go for, for the best bang for the buck. And uh, when when I saw the release notes on the a7 III when, they, when it was first announced, I just thought, that thing is gonna fly off the shelves. It's and, and it is like the pre-order lists are long and stuff like that. But if you're if you're looking at it, get yourself on the list because I, I don't think there's ever been a better value camera. It's it's outstanding. So we're gonna put it through the grinder the next couple weeks. Look forward to more content about that, among other content that I'll be making. If you have any questions about this or you know things specific things that you want to know, let me know in the comments and I can you know run some tests or, or answer them the best of my ability in upcoming videos and uh, you know maybe help you with your decision if you're looking to. To jump over here it's the best it's the best time if you've been waiting to jump to sony this is the best time to do it i think all right i'm done <laughs>